Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today's going to be an interesting episode. I really want to build something over on this hill, and it stems from a show that I've been watching over the course of the past few days or so. Now, a very interesting thing about me is that I uh, do not watch any anime whatsoever. So this is actually the first time I've ever watched a show like this, and it is a funny story how I even came across it in the first place. So as we fly over here and I get myself situated, I'll discuss more of how this ended up even becoming a thing that I ended up watching. Here's what happened. I am a professional musician, so I make music on my own time uh, for fun, but I also do it as a little bit of a side career. So I've been making music for 10 years now, and I'm very well versed in the EDM world. For those who understand that type of stuff, my favorite genre to make is uh, color bass at the moment. So very, uh, very used to making electronic music. And during one of my songs that I was making, I really needed some sort of female. Um, I needed like a female lead giving a monologue, if you will. That's the best way I'm going to explain that. And so because of that, I was kind of just half searching around on YouTube, clicking on a whole bunch of different clips from movies and shows to try and find the monologue that I was looking for. Again, I didn't know exactly what it was that I was looking for. I was kind of just going through a whole bunch of clips and videos trying to find one that I liked. And what ended up happening was um, I came across a clip from the show Free Ren. Now, I really liked the art style from Free Run. As you can see from my Minecraft world, they're kind of similar in a sense. Just looking at all this stuff, it kind of reminds me of the show a little bit. It's kind of interesting. So I got really, really intrigued by this show because of the clip that I had watched. And so I was like, you know what? I've never watched anime before. And I kind of want to give it a try because I was playing Rocket League with my friend and I was talking to him about this thing that I was that I was doing and I wanted this vocal line for the song and he was like, oh, you should watch the show. It's a really good show. So I was like, you know what? I'm an open minded person. I've never really watched anime before, but I'll give it a try. I'll see what it's all about. I'll watch Free Red. Let me tell you, when I watch this show for the first time. I am a 24 year old man and I was almost moved to tears multiple times throughout the course of the show. This show is honestly one of the best shows I have ever watched for anything in my life ever. And that is coming from a person who does not watch movies or shows or anything like that very often at all. And so in today's video, I wanted to build one of the main things about Free Ren, which is that she, the main character, Free Ren, is a mage and she carries around this staff. And I want to build that staff in my world because um, when you watch this show, and it's the whole reason I'm making this video, the principles behind the show are really, really important. And I wanted to discuss that in today's video while I'm building the staff. And so I wanted to have something in my world to kind of remind me of those principles, if you will. Uh, that's a little confusing, but it'll make sense as we go on. All right, so uh, let me put a picture of the staff on the screen so you can see what it looks like. And basically I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here in Minecraft. So. Uh, that's what the staff looks like right here. And essentially what I'm thinking is I'm going to have this staff in a very, uh, large form sticking out of the ground here so that we can see it from down there. Cause I think through that sight line, it's going to be really nice to have this cool thing sticking out of the ground. But I actually think I'm going to angle it this way because that circle part, uh, can go over here. And so I think it's going to look really, really cool. And so, um, Essentially today I'm going to be using uh, oak logs, uh, stripped oak logs, some red wool, uh, red glass, which I have on me right here. And then uh, I think honestly, that's it. I, I believe uh, it's a very simple color palette for this thing. I don't think it's all that complex. So that should be all we have to uh, do there. And we're going to make it look really nice, of course, and everything. So. Um, yeah, let's get started on that. It's going to be a lot of fun and it shouldn't take me that long today. But what I really wanted to do 
In today's episode, as this might be edited a little differently, I'm going to talk about a lot of the principles of this show and just what the show was going over while I'm building this because I think it's really, really important and it was really touching for me to listen to this show for the first time um, because of that. It, it was a very moving show. All right, so the show, Free Run, what is it about? Don't worry, I'm not going to give any spoilers. I'm just going to give you a brief uh, synopsis of what the show is about here. So basically, Free Run is about an elf that... Um, has lived for a very long time and was able to go on this journey with these heroes. Now, once that adventure comes to an end, that's where the first episode starts. And that crew, one of the members of the crew, um, then passes away. And so Free Ren is really uh, taken back by this because she obviously lives for a very long time. The other members of the crew don't. And because of that, um, she, let's just say she didn't value their time together enough the first time around. And so she goes on this journey again with new um, participants. And throughout the course of this second journey, she learns to value the time more. And so that's basically a brief uh, summary of the show without any spoilers. And so um that's a very very moving thing because a lot of the show talks about uh just what it means to value time with other people and just value your situations and what i love about the show the most is that it she wants to get to know people better and value their time together more and um this is something that's really, really important to me and why I wanted to discuss it, because it's actually um, something that hit very close to home with me. And that's why I talked about why it made me tear up, because that show makes you realize that um, we really are only given one life, right? We, we only have one life on this earth, and it's very rare that you're given a second chance in a lot of situations. So what's very important is that if you have made a mistake or say you wish you knew someone better or you had done something differently, it's always important to remember that that type of situation is not fixed and set in stone. You can go back and change those situations. You can relive some of those memories and do your best to um, turn things around for yourself. And this was something that hit very close to home for me because I'll tell you guys a funny story about uh, Mr. Moonglow here. And so this was when I was in high school. I was um, very different <laughs> than what I am now. I will just say that. Very, very different. So in that sense, what I mean by that is I was just really... Uh, I was a lot more naive in the sense of I was not as wise as I am now. And I don't mean to call myself wise. I just mean uh, I made a lot of poor decisions and I was very, very hard on myself. And what I mean by that was that I was just uh, I had a lot of negative self-talk and I didn't quite believe a lot of the good things about myself. And because of that, that stirred me away from hanging out with other people or wanting to be around other people because I was not comfortable with who I was. Now, this always confuses me because I um, I was very fortunate to be in the position that I was. I grew up in a really nice town. I had uh, lots of great friends. I did a lot of great things. This is the only word I know how to describe what I'm trying to describe about myself so it might be a little difficult to understand what I mean but I was basically a jock in high school <laughs> I was very much a jock uh, and so um, to me that was like that that's what was cool and I decided to really own that personality and I own that personality because I wasn't comfortable with who I was. I didn't think that 
you know, the other hockey players or other people in my high school would think I was cool for liking the things that I normally liked. Now, this is some life advice for uh, some younger people out there who may be watching this um, who haven't gone through those stages yet. That stuff simply doesn't matter. Being cool, whatever it is, having lots of friends, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the friends that you do have, and it's why I love this show so much, the friends that you do have, the memories that you do make with those friends is what matters the most. And it's about building that relationship with those who are around you and valuing your time with those who are around you and not being so hard on yourself. I think this type of situation really is important for something like um, family and really close friends that you've known for a long time. Um, that's what I would relate it to the most. And that's just that we all have a limited time on this world. So it's very, very, very important. And I cannot stress this enough that as you go through life, you learn to value the little things and value the little timing that you have and make sure that you don't take situations for granted. And most importantly, that you be yourself in those situations and you learn how to navigate through those type of situations by being your honest self. Until your time is truly up in this world, you always have the opportunity to go back and fix the things that you've done wrong. Whether or not other people will accept those um, things that you try and change is not something that you should be concerned about. And I absolutely love this about the show. Absolutely love it. It teaches you that not everyone is going to understand forgiving each other or you trying to make a change. And the show teaches you that that's okay because it's not about them accepting your change. It's about you changing yourself to make that change, if that makes sense. Because really, when you think about things, this was something that was very hard for me to understand um, when I was, let's just say, 17, 18. You've only lived for such a long time at that stage, right? You know, 17 years, although it seems like a lot when you're that age, it really isn't all that much, especially now that maybe six years have gone by now, I just realize how um, long this life is, but also how short this life is. It's it's much shorter than it seems. The days just get quicker and quicker and quicker as you get older. And so I think that really helps with um, valuing things because uh, you realize that, you know, the time in this world is limited. And so it makes you want to correct the things that you've done wrong. One thing I think that's really, really important about free run is that it teaches patience. And this is something that um, is an extremely valuable principle to me because uh, it, it's very hard to understand when you're younger that a lot of people around you, they think very differently than you do. And of course, it's not just for younger people as well. This is something that even now I still tr struggle with, which is it, it's just such an important thing to learn that not everyone has the same thinking methods as you. They don't solve problems the same way that you do. They don't think about things the same way that you do. And a lot of people deal with emotions and situations, for lack of a better term, differently than you do. And so it's important to understand that patience because for some situations, people may just take a little longer or they may be faster at solving things. And that is really apparent in Free Ren because originally she has no patience at all in the first journey. But in the second journey, she learns to um, grow that patience and understand that uh, the people that she's going with on the second adventure are going through that adventure for the first time. And so they may not have the best understanding of how to navigate through this stuff. And I love that 
about the show because that is something that is so true in life and is very, very important is that when you go through something with someone for the first time, they may not understand how difficult it can actually be and what it's like to traverse through that. It's just a really great trait to have and patience is patience is so, so, so important. And uh, it's something that I try to um, really model myself after and understand how to have that patience. So I, I really, really admired that about the show, having the author and, um, and all that just really emphasize that growth and patience from free Ren. And uh, th that was just very, very important to me when they uh, started, you know, really kind of hammering that in during the show. And so um, I really wanted to mention something about patience there because uh, it's just it's so important, it's so important. And so I guess the show just, it has a lot of great things about just life in general and navigating through these really difficult situations. And I just love how it's, uh, you know, in an anime style, but the character is so relatable to real life and it doesn't feel like a cheesy cartoon show that some of these animes do if i'm being completely honest with you and i highly recommend you guys go and watch the show if you haven't you're gonna not only learn a lot but you're gonna enjoy the experience of the show as well just because of simply how good of a show it is if you like my channel you're gonna like the show <laughs> that's the best way to explain it because um they're very similar in art style with all this fan fantasy stuff we have um behind me uh it is you know one thing about free rent to me that really stood out was just how carefully into consideration everything has been taken um and I love the music in this show. It is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the composer that wrote the music for this show, uh, <laughs> like literally, I'm talking, moved me to tears, which very rarely, if not, has ever happened. I don't think that's ever happened before. Um, and it's just such beautiful work with the music. Um, probably some of the best I've ever heard when it comes to, uh, you know, a composition and orchestral mix for something before um and it, it's why i'm making this video in the first place as a musician i understand what it takes to create that type of stuff and um what it means and i think that uh evan call the composer really captured that feel of um not only wishing that you could have a second life to redo the things that you wish you could have done the first time around also that emotion of wanting to correct things in this first life that you have and that's something that's really difficult to explain so i highly just recommend you go and listen to the soundtrack um and then there's just a lot of like soundtracks during the battles and stuff that are really nice very energetic very uh great to listen to and that's always um, good to have that variety as well. So, uh, yeah, there's just, <laughs> I mean, I've been rambling about this show for like an hour now. <laughs> there's just so many great things I could say about it. Um, but the most important lesson of all is that first one I went over. And that first one I went over is that you really do only have one life. So it's very important to cherish all of those moments that you have during this life appreciate the little things help those around you who are in need because although it may not be a big deal to you it could be a very big deal for them and i think that's the most important thing about all of this and what free Ren has taught me is that it isn't always about you i i think it's very important to remove that selfishness that your natural mind has and understand that this entire world isn't about yourself and that others you know may be in need and your little help that you give them whether it's a small task during the day it can actually go a very very long way for them and you may not even realize it and i think that's what's really really important for me and so i wanted to get that across in this video because um you know that's something that i think i could work on but i think just that whole principle is very very important to me it's something that i wish that i was better at when i was younger um w which is very much to help those in need around you very important to not only um 
emphasize that, but just how important that is for yourself and understanding that, you know, not everything is about you in life. And I had a difficult time getting through that originally um, because I really spent a lot of time very selfishly thinking that the world revolved around me when in reality the world does not revolve around you it revolves around everyone working in unity and working together and um that's just something that's very very important to me and i'd i'd love to um just share that here with you because that that is just so when the show gets that across to you um man it's just what an eye-opening thing that is uh very very eye-opening very eye-opening and i've missed a block <laughs> although it's just a silly staff from the show it's more about a representation of what the show stood for and what it means to me and i just want to have it in this world so that anytime i'm playing in here and i see this I remember those values. I remember those things and I have it right here in front of me. So I guess we're almost done now. We just need to do the last little part here. So uh, we got to make this little uh, ball orb thing in the center. So uh, I think I'm going to use planks for that job. Um, so let's do that and then we'll finish today's video. Anyways, let me walk you over there and show you what we did with the build today. So uh, as we land, you'll see the, uh, <laughs> I just said it, but land part, uh, we have this rock here. And so I used uh, smooth basalt. We got moss, cobblestone is in here to add a little bit of rough texture to it. Then we got some smooth stone and a site. And of course, uh, azalea leaves with the flowering ones as well. Just so we have a little color variation oh cobbled deep slate slabs as well were tossed in there and uh that's what i meant by kind of having it like sit inside of a hill like if you think of that stereotypical like um uh sword in the stone type thing uh where the hero has to pull the sword out of the stone i want kind of wanted something like that and so then if we fly i'll show you the actual staff itself so obviously just like free Rin's staff with the circle little triangle point the cloth on the side with the ball in the middle. I think the ball could have been a little bigger, but eh, this is Minecraft after all. Sometimes it's hard to gauge those things. Uh, but yeah, mangrove wood, stripped oak planks, and uh, red wool was really all that was used in that. So pretty simple color palette, but I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Uh, that's such a cool thing to have in the sight line over there in the background. I think that's, uh, you know, it's just pays homage to the show, but also just really um, to be able to see that every day is just a great way to see or a great way to remind myself of what that show was about. And that's the whole reason I wanted to build it, because as we walk through here, you'll see it's the whole reason I put it over there was it is now basically in the sight line of everywhere around here. You can see it in the background of pretty much all of these builds and it'll always, always be there. And uh I just really like that about it. So that's about all we have time for for today. Uh, of course, before we finish, let's answer the comments of the day. We have a couple new donators to mention. All right. So the two donations come from Elijah O'Reilly with a 25. Very, very generous of you. Thank you so much for doing that, Elijah. And he had a nice little note about my wisdom teeth. So thank you for your kind wishes. I am feeling better now. So uh, we're doing good. And uh, yeah, just again, thank you so much. And of course, uh, next episode, we'll make sure to get him a villager and uh, we'll set him down somewhere. And then uh, we have a nice little $3 donation from Johnny Neg Neguyen? Nagayan. I'm going to go with Nagayan. I feel like that's the best way to pronounce that. Gayan? Maybe the end is silent? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Johnny, for your donation. It is greatly appreciated. All right, let's go over our comments of the day.
All right, today's comment comes from DJW7141, and they said, question, how long have you been playing Minecraft? Now, this is a great question, and why I wanted to answer this one today is because I have been playing Minecraft for uh, well over 15 years now, I think. Almost. Uh, maybe about 14 years is a little bit more realistic of an answer. So, I am 24. And the first time I ever played Minecraft, I was 10 years old. I remember it very specifically being at my friend's house and playing the alpha in his father's workroom and uh, just running around on that for a little bit. And that was my first experience ever in Minecraft. It was a, a day after school that I had just gone over to his house and uh, started playing on his father's computer. And... Um, after that, uh, I didn't really know what the game was. I didn't buy it <laughs> after that when I got home. It actually took me a little while to buy the game for myself, and I ended up playing it on my brother's uh, laptop. He had a really old, um, I think it was like the brand was like Vizio or something. I don't even remember. Um, really old laptop, and I played Minecraft Beta 1.5, I believe. that. So that was my first ever world that I had that was actually mine. Look at these leaves, by the way. This is very nice. Um, and so I played Minecraft Beta 1.5 Survival for the first time ever having my own world. That was my first like real experience of Minecraft. And I had that world until 1.7.3. And then uh, that laptop uh, was not mine. So my brother ended up using it more and more. And then I just never really uh, finished that world. I do not have that world anymore. I don't even know where it is. There wasn't much on there, probably less than 30 hours of gameplay on that world. And then I ended up getting my own computer when I was about 12 or 13. I got a laptop uh, gifted to me by my father for Christmas. And that laptop uh, was my introduction to the true world of what it is to uh, play Minecraft. And that was back in the release days. And, you know, I had that laptop for maybe two or three years and then kind of just played the game on and off. So I wasn't really like super, super, you know, played the game ever since it came out for, you know, nonstop hours. This world didn't start until 2019, 2018 or 2019. It's hard to remember. Um, and it was originally for my old YouTube channel where I wanted to just kind of uh, play the game and upload it to my YouTube channel, which was a multi-game YouTube channel. I did a lot of stuff on that one. Never did well. The videos got like 20 views. <laughs> and so if you saw my building ideas video, that's what that old base was from. Eventually I moved to this one and I kind of just started playing the world for fun and I stopped uploading on that channel. So, um, you know, there was a lot of like things that happened that were just not recorded on video, like all of this getting changed and whatnot. And so that was kind of my experience of how this world came to be and how long I've been playing Minecraft. So I've been playing for a very, very long time. It's why the beta versions mean a lot to me is because that's where I started. And so I have a lot of fond memories with that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's how long I've been playing Minecraft. That's the history of this world. That's the history of me. I've been playing for a very, very, very long time. And, uh, you know, the older I get, the more I kind of just treat this game like painting or drawing <laughs> and less than less like playing a video game. Back then, it was like playing a video game. I was not very good at building. 2018, 2019, I started to really enjoy building. Nowadays, I just really enjoy the treating it like a painting and solely just building aspect of it. Not really so interested in the, uh, the video game part. Um but for whatever reason, I like doing it in survival. I don't like playing in creative. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so, so much for uh, watching today. And uh, yeah, if you haven't, please go ahead and watch Free Run for me. Fantastic show. And uh, I promise you will like it. Anyways, as the sun sets, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.